like to stand and introduce a woman of God, Bishop Louise Williams Fisher. Please stand to be of Almighty God, and certainly we're in His presence. We acknowledge the presence of the pastor and head of the church, Reverend Eckhart, and we acknowledge the presence of all of the other ministers that might be present this morning. Certainly we acknowledge the presence of the officers of this church, our First Lady, and we give glory to the Spirit of Almighty God. I'm glad to be here. Uh, after all of that introduction, I'm just a beast. I'm just God's vessel, that's all. Delighted. You know, someone was speaking to me one time and they were saying, I want you to be a bishop. And we're going to make you a bishop. And he says, and if you give me a thousand dollars, I'll make you a bishop. <laughs> so I said, I'm already a bishop. It's just in the back of the name and not the first of the name. So it's Louise Williams, bishop. Of course, he turned his head and walked away. But I'm happy with that. At the moment, I'm happy with that until God moves in another direction, and when he moves, he moves without you having to pay. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you, sisters. Thank all of you for those beautiful songs I heard. Thank you, Pastor, for extending the invitation, and to First Lady officers. I hope that I will be able to bring you a word today that will leave you thinking I always try to challenge your thoughts yes. so that when I'm done, you'll think about it even after God has turned me loose. So my message comes today from the 12th chapter of Jeremiah. If you have your Bible, you may follow along. But it simply says, if you have run with the footmen, and they, if you have walked with the footmen, and they have wearied you, how then can you contend with the horses? For in the land of peace which I have entrusted in you, how will thy do in the swelling of the Jordan? I want to preach for a little while this morning from the subject running with the horses. Running with the horses. Amen. Running with the horses. There is a place that God has ordained for each of us to be. Now I know we have our desires and we have our thoughts about what we want to be. But God, before we were born, while we were still a dream in our mother's and father's hearts, God had already decided who we were going to come through. And what we were going to do and what we we're going to be when we get here. Now some of us, it's easy because we always live in obedience to Almighty God. We, we've been trained by good parents. We had good upbringing. And some of us want to be what we want to be. And no matter what we learn in school, no matter what is taught to us, no matter what our parents says, we want to be what we want to be. Yeah. And sometimes our children come like that too. Yeah. But sometimes you got to do your children just like you do your horses. You got to break them in. Yeah. They may come with one attitude. They may come with one spirit. But you got to break them. Yeah. God wants us to raise our children in the manner that they should go. Amen. And if there's any other burden that I bring you that is on my heart today, it is the burden for the next generation. Amen. 
it may be late for some of us, and some of us may be able to change some of our ways, but it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. If we're going to teach them to do right and to be right, we got to start while they did not laugh. We got to start singing to them, talking to them, praying with them, correcting them even when they are infants. And I think that we have gotten so far away from where God would have us to go that we are out of control. This world is out of control. And it is out of control because of disobedience. Yes. Yes, sir. A lot of things that come our way that we must learn how to overcome in order to be ready to run for, with the horses. And if our children are going to be raised and know how to run with the horses, Mom, we got to start now. Amen. We can't wait until they are 11, 12 years old to start teaching them manners. you got to teach them now, yeah. even while they're on their lap. There's certain things they can have, and there's certain things they can't have, and they're going to cry to get those things they can't have, and you must be able to ignore their cry yeah. and say no. Yeah. We train them from the lap. I want to talk for just a moment about Jeremiah. Amen. I love him. That weeping prophet. Yeah. As the curtain rises, we see him standing center stage and he's pleading with almighty God and God he's, he's talking to he, he's been given an assignment from God and he's been given an assignment to speak to Judah he didn't exactly want that assignment either as a matter of fact Jeremiah was assigned to speak to Judah through five kings Five kings, his assignment was still, you speak to Judah. First king, speak to Judah. Second king, take a message to Judah. Five kings, he was ordered and assigned to speak to Judah. So he had a message from God for who? For Judah. A message Judah really didn't want to hear. A message Judah didn't want to know about. Yeah. Jeremiah's assignment was to give them the message whether they wanted to hear it or not. Yeah. Pastor's assignment is to pastor you, lead you, prepare you for a greater anointing whether you want it or not. Yeah. That's his assignment. Yeah. To lead you to the next step. Yeah. That's what we do. And that's what Jeremiah's message was all about. Jeremiah's assignment to give them the message whether they wanted to hear it or not because it was a message that was going to prepare them to be able to run with the horses. Yes, yes. Jeremiah was to get them ready. God is telling me to tell you just about the same thing today. You're almost in his presence. You're on your way into the presence of Almighty God. You have been led just about there. And he has a few more things he wants to work out in some of us. In order for us to get ready. The old folk used to sing an old song, My Lord, get us ready for that great day. God is getting us ready for a greater anointing. So, so as Jeremiah preached to Judah, Having the assignment, we hear him saying, Thou art righteous, O God. When I plead with you, let me talk to you about thy judgment. Wherefore are they happy that deal treacherously with you? Why are they happy? They're not dealing with you the way they should. Why are they happy? And, and we're dealing with a prophet who has just found out they want to kill him. He's just found out it wasn't from God, but they hated him so bad they wanted to kill him. He'd been a friend to the family, 
He'd been treated like a tame lamb in the house. And some of us have been like that too. And yet he finds out they want to kill him. And you know that's a painful thing. When you've been a friend to someone, when you have befriended them, their family, their children, been in their house, lived in their house, or had them in your house, then all of a sudden you find out they are not what you thought they were. That's what Jeremiah was complaining about. They wanted to assassinate him. And we got him. We got him. They may not assass assassinate us with a gun, but they assassinate us with a tongue. Yeah. And we do it to each other sometimes. Yes, if we haven't been raised up right. They wanted to assassinate our character. Yeah. They want to stun our spiritual growth. Every time you make up your mind, you're going all the way with Christ, and there's nothing that's going to stop you. The first thing is, oh, she done got hold of I remember when we used to do this, and I remember when we used to do that, but she's a holy now. She done got hold of They will remember everything you've done, but they won't remember from when you come, you left behind, and that you made up your mind that you're going. Exist. He's not dead. He's not asleep. 
for his enemy. But as he began to talk to God about how God has allowed them to flourish and how they have prospered, he recognized that God judges righteously. And sometimes we don't understand that. We see our enemies growing. We can't understand why. Oh, he says, oh, righteous God, you have tried me. You know me. You know my how many times have we said that to God? God, you know that I love you. You tried me. You know what I'm all about. Why is it that I have to go through this? Go through it so you can grow. If you don't have anything to go through, you don't grow. There's no where for you to go. Jeremiah says, you've tried my heart. I judge righteously. Mm-hmm. And you try the reins of my heart. Yes. Yes. But let me see your vengeance upon them. Yes. Upon them. Yes. Let me see that vengeance of them. For unto thee I have revealed my cause. Let me paraphrase that for a moment. That's what God and Jeremiah is talking about. As I paraphrase that, I find Jeremiah, what he's really saying is, God, why don't you do something yes. about them wicked people? <laughs> God, why do you let them prosper Wait. as wicked as they are? And I have to work so hard for like everything I get. They don't love you. They don't care about you. Why don't they have to struggle? The way some of us who love you struggle. Yes. He says, you have planted them. You have planted them and they've taken root. Yeah. You, they've grown. They, they bring forth no fruit. no fruit. But they have grown. It's all because of you. Yes. It's because of your mercy. Yes. Yes. It's because of your grace. Yes. It's because they've been blessed. Now, maybe you don't understand this, but let me say this. I know that sometimes... We do try to go from mountain top to mountain top. Yeah. And we want to just skip through the mountain and we want to skip there with no problems or no concern. But I believe that there are 10 or 15 of us in this building today, in this crowd this morning, that has been through the valley. All we want to talk about is going to the mountain top. But, but some of us have travel through the valley. Uh-oh. And in valley traveling, yeah. we learn how to grow in the valley. Yeah. It's not in the mountain that we grow. But we grow on our way to the mountain. We don't experience the crooked roads. and We don't experience the deep valley. It's on our way up the mountain. Climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Yeah. When you're on your way there, yeah. you develop strength when you're on your way there. Yeah. You develop endurance on your way to the mountain top. And when you get to the mountain top, you can look down in the valley. Yeah. You can see where God has blessed you. And you can say, when you look down in the valley, you see, I don't know anybody that can try. Yeah. 